What is going on, everyone? Well, welcome back to another episode of the Always Compete Seahawks podcast. I'm Sam. That is Mike. Today, we're going to be breaking down a very hot topic in Seahawks world. Frenzy has passed. The draft is actually like exactly a month away. Yeah, so almost exactly, I'm, yeah. I'm so excited for the draft, by the way. I've never had a pick this high, ever. I know Which Mike, is, being a Bears fan, is very much used to having an incredibly high pick. Appreciate that one, dog. Actually, I'm not because we traded four for Cleo Mack and Justin Fields, so I don't even know what this is like either, to be honest. Well, <laughs> I mean, you, you also had one. number two. You also had the number two pick, so. All right, let's move on. Let's move. Next, Next, topic. Topic. Next get, Just go. Just keep going. You probably took Patrick just Mahomes stop. or Sean Watson, right? So basically, we're picking nine in this huge <laughs> draft, and uh, it's very exciting. But very exciting. in between, you need to fill the time. And recently, a few major contracts have been creating some buzz in the NFL, especially because these contracts are objectively massive. The Devonte Adams signing a contract worth roughly twenty-eight and a half million dollars average per year, and Terry Kill signing thirty million dollars average per year. This is quarterback Crazy. money. This Crazy. is quarterback money. Mm-hmm. For reference, Russell Wilson's first contract with the Seahawks, now his second record-breaking contract, his first contract with the Seahawks, was for $21.5 million a year. Mm-hmm. And then now he's making 35 And he's going to get paid 50 soon. He's going to get paid 50 At least so, 50 I don't, I don't know if you've been seeing some reports. At least 50 But that's, yeah. another, that's another discussion. That's, another, that's another discussion. I'm sure of next year, by the way, we need a, like the one-year retrospective on the Russell Wilson trade is going to be tough that vid's gonna go hard i wonder how many uh i wonder how many subs we'll have by then which speaking of which if you're not already subscribed you should subscribe so you don't miss that video a year in advance by the way it's coming it's coming coming. and it'll be here we also have some we also have some uh juicy things on the way as well with the draft if you're a real fan that's been here for a long time you know what happens with the draft you get them interviews baby you get them udfas shout out my boy josh johnson Josh Johnson, come back on the pod. Check we your DM, you, bro. If we you know you, bro. what I'm saying, check your check your DM, Josh. Check I might DM. have sent one to you that meant to be for Selena Gomez, so just ignore that one. But check yeah. the, all the other ones. If Mike, if if Mike was asking for uh, suggestive pictures from you, Josh, it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not for you. <laughs> okay, but moving anyways. on again. Moving, and, on. <laughs> moving on. Before we get, yeah. we don't have any money, but we're gonna get demonetized nope. anyways. Absolutely. Uh, not. These contracts have been creating rifts considering the receiver class that is prepared to get paid this offseason. We're talking yes. A.J. Brown, Terry McClure, D.K. Metcalf, Debo Samuel. Uh, those are that, That's the big four. And then, I mean, if Ravens Cooper, fans are going to demand Cooper, that Cooper Marquise Cup. Brown is put in there for some reason. But Cooper Cup might get a new contract, too. You I might mean, get a new contract. But I'm really focusing on these top four yeah, because yeah, I think yeah, yeah, one, no, I one gets paid. The and dominoes, gonna yeah. The dominoes, the dominoes are going to fall. 100%. So that creates the question, is it realistic to pay DK Metcalf this kind of money? What are, what are the options? And what should be the ultimate final decision made by the Seattle Seahawks? So I say we dive right in. Talking yeah. about – I say we begin with what a contract might look like and then we kind of discuss some other hypotheticals mm-hmm. afterwards. Yeah. What – I mean, I mean, this contract is likely going to range in that – like the 20s, 20, like 20 to 25, 26 million dollars, I imagine. Yeah. That yeah. That's where it's going to range. Yeah. Because ultimately, I, I in negotiations, his production cannot compare to Debo Samuel, who just put mm-hmm. up a ridiculous season. Uh, and uh, by the way, I have a very hot take on this. I think Debo Samuel is only this good in San Francisco because they know how to use him there. Hot take. I, I think if he's, I think if he's used like DK Metcalf is in Seattle, he would be like, solid yeah but not like incredible you know what and, i mean so and if we're being fair i don't think dk can do all of the things that debo can do so i yeah, think no. i think I, I, per, i'm not i'm not creating some kind of like dk is better than debo because dk is better like true number one wide they're receiver. both they're both in good situations for them that's what i'll say yeah um, right but i'll anyways, also say something yeah, really quick before we even get started with any of this something i think that's very very interesting with this whole thing is i think the seahawks have to ask themselves how much of DK Metcalf being a superstar has been Russell Wilson and how much of it has been just DK Metcalf being awesome, you know, because if Russell Wilson that, leaves, that's a good point. I didn't, I didn't really think about that. If Russell Wilson leaves, which you know, he did and Drew Locke comes in and DK is just not the same guy. Well, I mean, maybe that had more to do with Russ than. Yeah. We thought. Here's the question. How is DK going to get worse when you add the best quarterback in the NFL? That's true. I mean, he's got hoes. 
you know, he's got he, a hose. No, he's got a hose, Mike. Excuse me. Excuse me. He's a got hose. a hose. So I think there's a, there's, there's a big, um, there's a, 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 a geez, I can't make a word right now. I'm just thinking about his shirtless pick with AJ Brown and I'm just I'm stumbling. <laughs> I'm stumbling. <laughs> All right. Anyway, All this right. is the first time of me getting in trouble so far this podcast, but uh, I think there's a very strong likelihood that given Drew Locke's strengths being arm strength, you know, extending plays, all of those things. And DK is a freak athlete. I think it could work really well. And we could just see some absolute bombs and, and all that, but uh, obviously won't have the chemistry he had with Russell Wilson. They won't have the rapport together. Drew Locke's going to need to come in and worry about uh, becoming the starting quarterback more than he worries about just getting DK the ball. So it'll be very interesting to see what Drew Locke and DK Metcalf look like. And I will also say, I don't think, I, I don't think DK gets a new contract before the season starts. I think they really want to wait and see what he looks like with Drew Locke. Um, that's my opinion. Can you afford to do that, though, is my question. I think that if DK Metcalf hits the end of the year with the potential to sniff free agency, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think he'll be – I don't think he'll willingly sign a deal unless the Seahawks offer up a God contract. I really don't think True. he will. Um, And what if his production is off the charts? What if he goes for a 1,400-yard season with, like, 10 touchdowns, and now you're sitting there thinking, damn it, now we have to franchise tag him. What happened to the last guy we franchise tagged who had a sudden breakout year? He was traded to the Chiefs. So, you know, I I, I say that this is a must-do in the Mm -hmm. offseason, I would say. I think that – And I could definitely see that point, too. Yeah, probably save us money. Yeah, you buy you buy when his stock is going to be lower. That's that that's the biggest key here. You pay him before he maybe has a breakout season. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I think Drew Locke is going to really play into his strengths very well. Drew Locke noticing his film, noticing his tape. Another one of his underrated strengths is his ability to make a tight window throw. He has some serious zip on the football, and whenever mm-hmm. he sees a tight window throw, he will try to make it. DK Metcalf is usually very closely covered. There is usually a safety blanketing over top. Jay and the Rams all, is going to be on him twice yeah. a year. Yeah. We all, we all know the struggles that Russ had with cover too deep. It mm-hmm. was like one of the things he just couldn't beat. Superman and Kryptonite, hundred percent. Yeah. You know, so I would say paying DK Metcalf, if you do pay him is a must this off season. I think I would be willing to go to $25 million because as I said, the man almost had a thousand yards without his starting quarterback for three games. And by the way, I'm going to point something out here. If you look at it, DK, DK's production, I'm not saying that this is Russ's fault. DK's production was better per game than when, than when Geno Smith was quarterback. I was going to say something too. I noticed, especially I think in the Jaguars game, I just noticed that when the yeah, play, when like, there was nobody open, he just threw it up to DK and he mossed and uh, Shaq Griffin. Griffin. Yeah, yeah, he marshed Jack Griffin on one of those plays. And then the Saints game, you know, I think – Throw it up. Adam, give him a shot over Marshawn Lattimore. And right? then he caught it. Goes for 84 down yards. 84-yard touchdown. So, I think – Meanwhile, when Russ that, came back, I think like the third game back when we played Washington, DK didn't have a target through like three and a half quarters. That is ridiculous. I'm sorry. That should never happen. That is something – that's something I don't Not, understand and, about Russell yeah. Wilson. Is he, he – I don't think – and this is weird to say maybe out loud. I don't think he trusted other people. Like, I I, he, well, I, I think he trusted Tyler Lockett a bit more than he trusted DK, which right, maybe but, isn't maybe isn't ridiculous, but you, also ridiculous, have to give, but you have to give him targets as well. If, if for no other reason, even if he was a scrub, right, which he's not, DK Metcalf is like 6'4", and he's muscular, he's strong. Like, if nothing else, just throw him a uh, jump ball. I mean, I saw very few jump balls. There were plays where he's streaking out field open and Russ hit him. But and there, and there are a few plays like versus uh, LA this year. Russ missed the second LA game. Russ missed the deep ball to DK mm-hmm. uh, down the left sideline. You know, mm-hmm. will Drew Lock make these throws? I'm not. I'm not going to say really. But mm-hmm. I think that if a quarterback can put more trust into into DK Metcalf, I think he'll be much more successful. Let's kind of look at other options here, which I think the only other definitive option is trade. Trade, yeah. It's been yeah. rumors. There's a report from Rich Simony. I'm the, I'm that's I'm gonna say that's how you pronounce the name. It might be Chimney as well. Uh, who he yeah. reports he reports for the uh, for the Jets, and he's a pretty trusted reporter. I think he works for ESPN. Um, he said that the Jets are gonna keep an eye on the contract uh, negotiations of Debo, AJ Brown, and DK Metcalf because there's always the chance 
then it will go down the tube. Look at what happened with Tyreek Hill. They wanted to negotiate it. It's a little different with Devontae Adams because Devontae Adams kind of knew that he was not going to be back. But the yeah. Chiefs were negotiating with Tyreek Hill, negotiates it to the boiling point, and they and the Chiefs come out and say, you know what, we're taking calls. We're taking phone calls. Mm-hmm. And he was traded like a week later. So, you know, there is a chance that DK Metcalf could get traded. And I'm saying – I'm not – put together present a point here what would be the minimum compensation you would accept for dk metcalf who's a 24 year old former pro bowl wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks? i think given his given his age given his superstardom already i think just off the dome i would say minimum two firsts i would say two firsts ideal if not i would like a first and at least a second added on to that a first a second and then maybe a young player or something like if it's the chiefs, I think they would obviously be more inclined to give us two first because. Of yeah. The yeah. I would say, I would say it would be a first and what I would call a collage of other picks. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If like, it's like, like a general gathering of other mid to late round draft picks that. Yeah. 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 I mean, let's just say it was the jets for a second. Like, and they like right now call John Schneider. They're like, Hey, we'll give you pick 10. We'll give you a third round pick. Are you taking that? I might take that, to be honest. Only if a ten only ten and a third. But, but it's oh. also hard. It's also hard. There's a lot of factors here. One of the big ones is a. Do you think you could draft another DK Metcalf? Yeah. Do you have confidence that you can find a guy to replace him? That's B, really the question. B. You're going in a rebuild, and he is as as of this point right now your only legitimate young superstar. Jordan Brooks is good. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. On, you know, they're good, but, like, DK's only the young superstar. DK is the only definitive mm-hmm. building block that I so, see. Every other, guy is a, every other guy is, like, a brick in the foundation. Mm-hmm. I think that the pick nine we have now in DK Metcalf can be the only two pieces on this team that we see as definitive building blocks. And not what I would call a rebuild, but almost like a retooling, a retooling of the yeah, Seattle Seahawks. Retooling. No, and, and I totally I, agree. I, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I mean, I, unless if you have like a guy that you really like at 10. That's why I think. And that's you're why confident I think, that if you well, have two guys that you really like and you're confident that they're both going to be really good. And like, it, let's say that, you're a, that, that the Seahawks are a big Garrett Wilson team. They really like Garrett Wilson or something like that. I would not maybe put it past them to take that trade and just say, well, we can get Garrett, Garrett Wilson and we don't have to immediately pay him $30 million here's, a year. But, you know, here, here's another thing is if DK Metcalf's contract is going to be an issue, which I don't think it is going to be because we have money now. Right. Because that's that's, the, that's what the Chiefs did. Right. They traded Tyreek Hill to save money because Patrick Mahomes is good about to be making $50 million a year. Well, we don't really have those cap constraints anymore after cutting Bobby and trading Russ. So, like, what's the point of not paying DK yeah. unless you think his agent and him just want way more money than they value next year. There's going to be a ton of money opened up from the Russell Wilson trade next right. year. There's going to be, right. I think like $35 million. Open. His contract hasn't even, or his contract won't even expire for another year. So you're literally just taking money from next year. So I don't see the reason why they wouldn't, unless again, DK Red yeah. and his agent are like, we want $30 million. And we're like, no way. Even um, if, is it debatable that you would give DK 30? I don't think it's totally insane to say that, mm, that to give DK $30 million. I would not give DK 30 million. Um, I think, I think even giving Tyreek 30 is, is, is a push. Um, the only thing would be though, is would you rather, assuming we get our, our new franchise quarterback this year or next year, would you rather not have DK or overpay for DK? I'd rather overpay for DK, right? Yeah. Um, same. And the cap, say, the NFL cap is expected to see a boom in the next two to three years. It's expected mm-hmm. to see a boom because of all the new media deals that are going to be coming in. It's expected to, I, I think I saw like there's going to, at one point it's going to reach 300 million. Wow. What's it at right now? Like 270? I think it's like 220. 220? Um, I'll look oh, up, wow. I'll look up NFL salary cap growth to get a yeah. general so, idea. I mean, it that's could, the thing it's because with at, at the point you're questioning, at about two hundred twenty million dollars. No, no. Uh, right now it's at two hundred eight million dollars. Oh wow! Would you say that it's wise to give a player of that, like give a player like a quarter, of, oh, not a quarter, like it would be like roughly like an eighth or so yeah. of that? It is hard for a non for a non quarterback, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm, very tricky. So okay, I think I think that the ideal trade partners here would be I've seen three teams that make the most sense. The Jets, um, to try to build around Zach Wilson, give him a weapon. Uh, we'll take our two first back from Jamal. I'm just kidding. Uh, the Jets make sense. The Chiefs make sense. Just trading Tyreek, obviously. And I've seen the Ravens also make sense. Um, although I don't think – can you – by the way, just pause for one second. Let's live in fantasy world. Can you imagine the absolute nukes that Patrick Mahomes would throw to DK Metcalf? The absolute – I don't just, want to imagine that, Mike. Well, no, you don't – I mean, I'm not saying – just in Madden. In Madden, obviously. Um, but – I don't think that the style of offense that the Ravens play would be fitting of DK Metcalf to be, to be honest with you. Um, I just don't know if that would fit his play style very well, but I think the chiefs, I mean, if you're, if you're Brett Veach, I mean, okay. you're, you're so, Seattle. What do you, what yeah, do you, what are you, right. what are you asking for? If you're Brett Veach? So right now, I, from what I'm gathering from over the cap.com mm-hmm. in 2023, the cap will likely be 231 million. In 2024, it will be 249 million. In 2025, wow. it will be 272 million. And by 2027, it will be around 325 million dollars. So, wow, that Mahomes deal looks a lot better now. I think you could afford it. I think we can. I think we can afford it. So, so, so let's so let's, let's let's answer the grand question to kind of wrap this up, Mike. Let's let let's say hypothetically, right? Hypothetically, if I just do, yes. If I just do some quick math here. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, so this, this, this. If, so DK Metcalf wants a, th- a five-year, $137.5 million deal, which is about $27.5 million a year. Mm-hmm. Would you rather give him that, knowing that he will be similar in production for the rest of his time in Seattle, which is around 1,000 yards, getting double-teamed a lot, getting a lot of attention? Double-digit touchdowns, assuming. Double-digit touchdowns. Or would you take the tenth overall pick straight up from the New York Jets? Mm, it's so hard. That's so hard. I would need I would need the tenth and like a third for it to be really. Okay. Let, okay. Let me spice it up. A tenth and a, the the tenth overall pick and the and a fourth round pick. That's Mike, we need really a definitive hard. answer. We need That's a really answer. hard. Because okay, so receivers are tricky. <laughs> Like let's not let's not think that they aren't. The receivers so, are tricky. I, I'm gonna ask it in the two part. Do you think that what do you think you would do and what do you think the team should do? Um, yes. would the team make that trade? No. Would would Pete and John make that trade? No. They love DK. I really think they want to get a deal done. I think we're gonna end up overpaying for DK Metcalf, but again, I don't think that's worst case scenario, being that we're gonna have a young quarterback come in and he's gonna need a reliable weapon. So Maybe I would ideally like to pay DK 23, 24 a year. You you just said 27 and a half. I could see the team pulling the trigger and giving him 27 and a half to be completely yeah. honest with you. Honestly, in my opinion, I would prefer to give him that contract. Mm-hmm. You never, ever know what you're going to get in the draft. And that's what makes trading Russell Wilson so risky because you're not guaranteed to get a star at number nine. Mm-hmm. You very well, you always picked at number nine, I think five years ago. John Ross. No yeah. bueno, as no bueno. they say. But, no. like, okay, that was, like, universally agreed to be a reach. Like, everybody was like, what? Yeah. He, he, he runs fast, mean, so he runs fast. Real, real, real quick, I'm, I'm just going to go back. NFL drafts. I was just doing the same thing. I was really just about to do the same thing. I want to take a look at who's picked at nine because I think this would be a good way to wrap this up to define kind of – what oh, do we think? Luke Keekley in 2012. That's a good one. All right. So in 2020, it was uh, CJ Henderson. Bad pick. Bad, bad pick. He got traded no pretty enough. much immediately after. In 2019, it was Ed Oliver, who's solid, not meh. great. That's, that's solid. A uh, Mike McGlinchey to the Niners. Meh. Yeah. Meh. You know, he's like, he's an above average right tackle. Uh, John Ross, as previously mentioned. Oof. 2016 was Leonard Floyd to the Bears. Bad pick for the Bears. Good get for the good player for the Rams. Bad, yeah, uh, I remember that. I could have told you that one. Eric that Flowers pick. to the Giants. Mike, we might have, Mike, we might have gotten a cursed draft pick. We we might have, dude. 2014 was Anthony Barr. 
that's I mean that's good, not great. In 2021, it was Patrick Sertain. Okay, okay. So listen, as long as we draft a corner, we're good. So we're going to take Stingley or Sauce Gardner, and then we're set. Perfect. Boom. Ready to wrap it up. Boom. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. As always, subscribe, leave a like, ring that bell. We'll see you in the next video. Peace, Peace out.